I'm Mike Himley. I am an associate professor at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. I am originally from North Dakota. My interests are ice hockey, really into ice hockey, whole families into ice hockey, uh, spending time with my kids, uh, reading, and I'm connected uh, to Tourette through my job. I do a lot of research with Tourette, uh, clinical work working with kids and families and adults with Tourette, uh, and uh, training others to better understand Tourette. My name is Doug Woods and I am from Ohio originally, a small town called St. Henry, Ohio on the western side of the state. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin right now where I am a professor of psychology at Marquette University. As far as my connection to Tourette's, I've been doing Tourette's work for about 23 years I think at this point and have had a lot to do uh, with the development and testing of CBIT, or the Comprehensive Behavioral Intervention for Tics, and now I spend a lot of time trying to get that information out to therapists who need to be trained. Uh, what does the Tourette community mean to you? I, I primarily work with kids and those kids have taught me a lot. They've taught me a lot about what it's like to be a kid. You know, we forget when we get a little bit older. They've taught me a lot in terms of just being a good parent. Um, they've taught me a lot in terms of being resilient. Um, how you can, you know, life can sometimes kick you in the teeth and you can get up and smile back at it. You know, it's funny because people will ask me, well, don't you get tired of you know, doing this talk or going to going there, or you're, you're away from home a lot, and, and, and I explain, like, when I go do these Tourette talks, that's actually the most rewarding part of my, 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 my job. Yeah, I'm giving my knowledge that I have, but they're giving me all, you know, so much more coming back to me. They are they're teaching you about resilience, they're very appreciative of what's going on. They're, they're bringing their stories to you, which gives all kinds of new ideas for things we can look at, and things we can do. I, I owe a lot to the community in that way, too. So what's your best memory of something that's happened at one of these Tourette meetings? I think one of the best meeting memories I had was just the whole experience at the, the um, World Congress in London a couple years ago where three or four hundred people from around the world all doing Tourette research got together and didn't matter what country you're from or what language you spoke, you were all interested in the same thing um, and getting to meet the kids in, in London at that time. That was an incredible experience for me. What about you? It was in South Dakota we were doing a talk and one of the youth ambassadors was there and he had just come back from the youth ambassador training at the Tread Association and I was talking about uh, living, adolescents living with, with Tourette and he was there and he wanted to sit up front with me and I basically said, you know, I think you could probably give this talk better than I could and you could just see the look of kind of horror come over his face, a pretty socially anxious kid and, and he stood up and to date he had one of the best Tourette talks I've ever listened to. Really? He said his first talk, it'll be his last talk, but it, but it was great. But it's been really interesting for me to see the kind of the arc of and uh, from going from this basic habit versus work to helping create CBIT. I mean, we didn't do that ourselves, obviously. There are a lot of people that are involved in, in the CBIT development. But then testing that and seeing kind of how it's become more mainstream and accepted over the last, you know, 15 years. So it's been an interesting arc. What is on the horizon in the field of Tourette syndrome that excites you? We're always making really interesting um, gains in terms of basic science in Tourette's and are under, increasing our basic knowledge of sensory processing in Tourette's, in terms of genetic function, genetic, genetics in Tourette, in terms of brain functioning in Tourette's. And I think all, all of those advances that we're finding scientifically will ultimately help us develop new drug, non-drug treatments. Before CBIT became CBIT, I was talking about habit reversal. When I would go to conferences and talk to psychiatrists or neurologists or even parents of kids with Tourette's and talk about behavior therapy, as an idea for treating Tourette's and I'd put up data, the reception was often hostile. It wasn't actually accepting. A lot of the work that we're doing now, as you know, is really focused on how do we really prioritize and figure out what the patients need um, and really listen to their stories so that we can tailor treatment and yeah. hit on the most important topics. And I think we're doing a better job of that now and I think that that's encouraging mm -hmm. and gonna help with our treatment efforts. Great.